Hey everybody, on this episode of Demo Scene Legends, we are looking at Ice Frontier by Skaven, a classic demo scene track from 1993, which comes in at 236 kilobytes and is just over two minutes long. Skaven or Peter Hajba is possibly one of the most well-known demo scene musicians or trackers. He was a member of the legendary Future Crew, who made some of the most famous PC demos of the early 90s. Skaven songs also later appeared in the Bejeweled series of games. Ice Frontier might be one of the best Skaven songs, so let's take a look at Ice Frontier by Skaven and find out what makes this demo scene track great. If you're new to tracking, it's just a way of making music on computers using samples or recordings of instruments. Let's take a look at the samples. We've got basses, pads, bells, leads, and drums. Let's go ahead and start the song. Okay, the first thing you notice is the big brass swells and the huge brass stabs that's going on. And check out the volume effect on the bass where it starts at a low volume and then he increases the volume using the D effect. Okay, now check out this fifth pad that's going on through almost the whole song, and it starts here. Next, we've got this rhythmic bass coming in. And let's hear it with the echo. And then we've got these synth leads that are kind of blending into each other using alternating channels and using the D volume effect. And you can hear the acoustic guitar coming at the end there. Let's go ahead and listen from the beginning again and we'll point out the chords. So it's G sharp 5, F sharp 5 over G sharp, D sharp 5 over G sharp, E sharp 5 over G sharp. Okay, so the 5 chord is just the root of the chord and the 5th note of the chord. So the bass note's just holding the same, it's G sharp. And then you've got this 5 chord moving along the top of it. And that's just because that 5th pad sample is being used here and there's no 3rd in any of these chords. Okay, let's solo some stuff. We hear a drum coming in. Now this is cool because you can see the volume effect on the snare that's making it really snappy. We've got some bells and some acoustic guitars with the delays on them. Okay, so let's go over the chord progression we're doing here, because we're switching it up after the intro. This chord progression is kind of one of the themes of the song, which is this minor 1 to the flat 6 major chord progression. Now what's really cool is the second chord here, the E major 7 add 9, actually comes from the bass moving to E, there's a high bell going up to D sharp, which is the major seven. And then the fifth pad is actually going to B and F sharp, which the F sharp is the add nine. Okay, let's check out the lead and the chord soloed here. Mm -hmm. 
One thing you can see is the notes from the echo become full volume and become part of the melody. And that's where that call and response thing comes from. And we're also switching up the chords here. We're going G sharp minor, D sharp minor, F sharp major, C sharp minor. And you can actually think of it as going down a fourth followed by going down a fourth again. So it's starting at G sharp, then going down to D sharp, and then going up to F sharp and going down again a fourth to C sharp. Both cases you're going to the minor chord, so it has a really melancholy feel. And at the same time, the top end, the brass is doing this ostinato, this kind of repetitive melody over and over again, and the fourth repetition, it does switch up the notes a little bit. Okay, so we finally kick in, we're going full steam ahead. Let's check out the bass, then let's check out the drums, and then let's hear the bass and the drums together. Just think how much sound he's getting out of those two channels, just from really smart samples and really smart programming. So let's check out these chord samples. They're using a volume stutter effect in the volume channel, and they're also using the vibrato effect. You can see those fifth pads fading into each other over two channels. Sounds really cool. And some swells going in there and cymbals. And coming up next, check out one of the only leads in the entire song. Be sure to check out the H command vibrato and the E command pitch bend down. Now this is cool if you turn off all the drums, bass, and everything. Listen to some of the other synths going on. Okay, and after this section ends, we're going to do a key change from G sharp minor to F minor. Then we're going to do just a vamp on F minor chord. I love that bass part where it starts on F, goes E flat, D flat, C, down to the F low. That was the bass soloed. Now let's check out the drums. This cool volume effect where it starts at full volume, then he drops it to one volume and does a quick volume slide up. Sounds really cool, like a reverb. Check out this descending pad. After the F minor section plays out, we're going to go into a D flat minor section for just a brief part and then that's going to build into the actual climax of the song which is going to be these giant brass chords <laughs>
Okay, so this is where the chords are echoing that first part where it's one minor to six flat major. So the bass is going from F to D flat and the brass on top is going F minor to E flat major to D flat major. Let's check out the brass soloed. So essentially the most basic description is it's going from F minor in one inversion to F minor in another inversion. Then it's going to E flat major, then it's going to D flat major. And then it repeats that. Check out these drums with these cool volume effects. I also love this melody line here, from right before the brass chords. It also really highlights that chord, D flat minor. You know, when you're in F minor, then it's D flat minor. When you're in G sharp minor, then it's C sharp minor. So it's a little confusing. But the melody does this huge downward leap from E flat, D flat down to E. And then check out these bells that are happening at the same time as those brass chords. Even at the end, he throws in one of those brass swells, which are punctuated throughout the whole song. Also, check out the pitch slide down effect that's being used here, but in the fine pitch slide down mode, which is a very slow pitch slide. And of course, the coda of the song, this is one pattern at the very end, which is back in the key of G sharp minor. A lot of people really like this part of the song, and in fact, Necros extended this in his remix of the song. The chords here are different than anywhere else in the song. It goes G sharp minor, E major, F sharp major, then C sharp minor. And that's it. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys have any suggestions for songs I should cover, drop them in the comment below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, leave a comment, and see you next time.